Yeah, y'all let me know when the camera's going, right? What do you mean it's gone? It's recording now? Okay. Uh, uh. Howdy and welcome back to the channel. I'm Country Boy. And today, we're going to be talking about one of the cutest little uh, brown alien dudes that come out in the 1980s. I know I'm not talking about Mac and me, that wannabe little guy. I'm talking about the real thing. E.T. The extraterrestrial. Uh, this little guy warmed the hearts of millions back in the 1980s. They had him everywhere. I, I mean, who couldn't love this guy? He was so cute. He had the he had the heart of gold, literally a heart that glowed, you could say. And uh, he, yeah, like I said, th this guy just warmed the hearts of millions back in the 80s. Uh, and I, I loved this movie growing up. Um, but, I mean, we're not here just for the movie. We're here to talk about this figure that I got from NECA. Because NECA makes some of the best stuff, obviously. But, uh, I mean, I guess I guess there's nothing left to do but to look at the packaging. So, let's get to it. And so here is the packaging for E.T. The Extra Terrestrial. If you didn't know what E.T. stood for. Uh, Ultimate E.T. it says down there. And 40. That means it's been 40 years since the movie came out. 1982 to be specific. Uh, so I guess 41 technically this year. But wow, that's uh, older than me, believe it or not. Uh, I guess so looking at the packaging, uh, you can see a little bit of wear and tear on the sides of the white. I did get this at a collector con. Uh, it, so it wasn't brand new. I got this second hand. So I got I got some money shaved off. You know, I didn't pay full price for this thing. So I'm happy about that. And you know what? I don't buy these for the packaging anyways. I buy them for the figures inside. So this is the front. You can see E.T. obviously in all his glory. Kind of uh, a CG uh, rendition of him. Uh, that's what it looks like anyways to me. And his spaceship in the background and some trees. And then uh, on this side, we'll have an image of the actual M, uh, figure uh, itself. With his uh, little blanket on, you could say. Ultimate E.T. 40 again. And then on this side, there's four images of E.T. himself. He's got uh, some toys there. Bring the magic and excitement of E.T. the extraterrestrial into your world. As your friendship with E.T. grows, relive all his earthly encounters or look to the stars and create your own unforgettable interactive adventures. With E.T., the possibilities are endless. Wow. Sounds magical, doesn't it? Well, he was magical. He had lots of abilities, this, this uh, little brown dude. Uh, so, yeah, it, it says what it comes with here, right on the side. All, but we'll get to the accessories when we open it up. Don't want to spoil it. If you want to spoil it for yourself, go ahead and pause it. And go ahead and uh, zoom in yourself and read it there. Uh, then on the, the side, this is the classic E.T. look. This is uh, Amblin Entertainment's logo. You know, uh, Steven Spielberg's company. Uh, classic E.T. logo, obviously you can see. And there's some stuff down there. I can't quite read them, but uh, yeah, it's not, not too important. And then we'll look at the top here. E.T., extraterrestrial, warning, choking hazard, ages 14 and up. Again, you cannot be too young playing with these. You never know. You might choke on them or something. And then here's some credits for the people that sculpted and packaged it in photography and whatnot. So give them the credit they deserve. They got uh, some good work that they've done at NECA there. Now, like most NECA Ultimate figures do, they open up their window box. So here we go, another image of the actual figure itself. Got his finger out going, phone home. And then you got E.T. with all of his accessories looking freaking sweet, oh man. Yeah, this, this looks good. I'm liking the way this looks so far. So I guess there's nothing left to do but to get into the packaging. All right, and here we have the little brown guy out of the packaging. I don't know if you knew this, but in China, they couldn't even show this movie. He was completely censored because he looked too much like a human shriveled scrotum, which is not true. I just made that up. Don't believe me. And that is just mean to say because he is adorable. Who would say he looks like a scrotum? He's sure he's got some wrinkles and he's got a bulbous shape to him, but he's, I'd say he's more like a melting potato, if anything like that, with beautiful blue eyes. Uh, anyways, let's get to some of the accessories. He he comes with some uh, splayed out hands like this. And then he also has these other hands, which are kind of like, uh, fingers are kind of like bending forward, almost like he's maybe giving a hug to somebody or something like that. That's what these fingers are. I didn't realize his pointer finger is the super long finger on his hands, which makes sense why he points so much with it, I guess. 
because it's so damn long. And then he also has this hand and the other in his left side, which is uh, a holding hand. So you can maybe put his uh, one of his accessories in his hand, like like the, the the candy if you want, or maybe you have from another accessory set like a can of beer or something. You put a can of beer in his hand, you can get him drunk like he does in the movie, make Elliot belch while he's in school, make him feel drunk as well, because he's connected to Elliot. If you don't remember, he was him and Elliot shared a bond as well as the plants. He was bonded to the plants and to Elliot. And then his other hand he has is this uh, pointer finger of his where it lights up. Uh, his chest doesn't light up. There is another version of this. Actually, there's a couple of different versions of this uh, figure where the chest does light up. Uh, there is uh, another figure version where he's like dressed up in like the female clothing has the wig and like the dress and like, in, like a funny little alien in women's clothing. Uh, and there's also another one I think it has like all, all of like the accessories that he uses to build his um, satellite dish. So that's another one. Uh, so the, I got, I guess the more plain Jane version, you could say, plain Jane, which is all I wanted. I, I wanted just these basic accessories. So anyways, this is the finger he uses to go, uh, I'll be right here to Elliot at the end of the movie. He points at him and he's like, just crying his eyes out because it's so sad. the saddest moments in any movie ever <sighs> i don't know if anybody could get past that anywho uh so some of the accessories that he comes with right here some Reese's pieces or maybe i can't say that because it doesn't say Reese's pieces on here so they obviously didn't get the license for Reese's pieces themselves you know i'm more of a Reese's peanut butter cup guy anyways myself but the peanut butter flavor candy is what this is so it's got the orange and the browns and the yellows which is just like the Reese's pieces so this is obviously what Elliot used to lure him, uh, to, to follow him. He just laid up the trail of candies everywhere, and E.T. followed, and he loved them. He just gobbled them up. Uh, some other accessories right here. We have these plants, the, these flowers, which were also, I guess, linked to E.T. and uh, Elliot. Uh, so when Elliot and E.T. were sick and they were dying, so were, the, so were these uh, these flowers. They were, they were drooping and they were dying, and it was... Super sad as well, man. What a sad movie, but great movie. It's just, oh man, Steven Spielberg just had to bring up, bring the, bring the big guns, one of his big ones. Anyways, cool looking plant. Got a cool uh, pot. Uh, also comes with this right here, a speaking spell. So they obviously got the license for actual speaking spell because it says it right there, which is cool. What does it say? X W V U R F P. What does that spell? Success. I, I don't know. Uh, it's not a real word. Was that actually in the movie, that lettering for some reason? I don't know. But it's got raised buttons, which is kind of cool. I don't know if you could tell that right there. Uh, the buttons are kind of raised, so you can actually feel them. Uh, obviously, E.T. and Elliot would use this to kind of speak to each other before they actually could talk uh, English. And then uh, the back here is like t when you pop out the batteries, it's kind of what the back looks like. Looks really cool. Looks like a, a speaking spell. Like I had a speaking spell growing up, and this is basically exactly what it looked like. I, I can hear his voice coming out of that thing. And then right here, he also has this uh, the blanket that they covered him in so that they couldn't, so that he wouldn't be seen. So obviously, that this is brown alien was just out in public. So covered him up. It might even be the same blanket or. or or bed sheet, you could say uh, that they covered him up when he was dressed up as the ghost. When he saw that little Yoda, and he was like, home, oh, and he was like trying to follow him because, hey, I don't know if you knew this, fun fact, because E.T.'s uh, race was actually in the Star Wars movies. Yeah, that's right. They were in the council. Uh, if you zoom in on one of the this, this scenes there, I'll show you an image, I'm sure, uh, that his race was actually in the Star Wars movies. So, hey, E.T., the movie, is also part of the Star Wars canon of movies, if you didn't know that. Eh, fun fact. So, this would be the blanket that uh, they covered him in. You can open it up. It's uh, it's like a soft, rubbery plastic you could put around him if you want to, which is probably what I'll do. And then uh, you can close it back up and do that. And boom, that's what it's going to look like. He's going gonna, gonna to have the blanket on him, and he'll be ready to go home. Fly those bikes. So next up, I'll put some accessories in his hand and I'll, I'll bring another figure here to kind of compare size-wise what he uh, fares with, with other figures. So stay tuned for that.
And so as a little bit of a comparison, I got some NECA products that I thought I'd throw in here, uh, starting with Marty McFly from Back to the Future, who is another 1980s uh, character that people have grown to love throughout the years. Uh, I think he fares pretty well size-wise, honestly. I, he's maybe a little taller than he would be compared to uh, a human being, but Marty's also a, sh a shorter than average guy. So, you know, maybe it fares better in comparison than I thought. Uh, so it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good size-wise. Um, but I'll throw in another figure in here just for the heck of it. Uh, I got Raphael from the 1990 TMNT movie. Uh, and again, I think he fares pretty well together. I think that Raphael fares just as close to Marty McFly as he should. And um, obviously he's going to fit in pretty close to E.T. So yeah, that's that. It's looking pretty good. I'm liking the way that these guys are kind of going together. The, the way everything kind of fits size wise and realistically i mean they they definitely fit they got like animatronics both of them they both got like puppetry going on so it totally works and then one last one another 1980s character i'll throw in that does not fit size wise but he's also another adorable and lovable character from the 1980s i just thought i had to throw him in here he's also from NECA. Uh, Gizmo from Gremlins, uh, Gremlins Two. This version, obviously, specifically. Uh, I, I, I think these are both adorable characters. Love them both, and uh, I think they are awesome in my collection. But let me know what you think. What is your favorite nineteen eighties character or or movie or what have you? Who should I have put in here as a comparison instead of these guys? Uh, do you like E.T. even? Do you even remember E.T.? Are you are you even old enough to have seen E.T.? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, give me a like, subscribe. I'm CountryBoy9 with an underscore in there somewhere. Go ahead and check me out. I'm also on another channel with my friends called Wasted Opinions where we talk about movies, TV shows, video games, what have you. Uh, we just have a fun time. Go ahead and check us out. Uh, just do whatever you want. So I guess until next time, I gotta do some phoning home. See ya, E.T. about weird stuff. Like what would happen if E.T. and Mr. T. had a baby? <laughs> well, you'd get Mr. E.T., wouldn't you? And you know, I think he'd sound a little something like this. Ah, pity the fool who doesn't phone home. <laughs>